And somewhere around the time of playing at the Phoenix Open and then Pebble Beach, Sean Jefferson heard from Larry Fitzgerald there. Darren, do tell. What do we know? We don't really know much of anything at this point. Uh, as usual, um, Jefferson did say he shot him a text and to say basically congratulations on the job. Um, and, and Sean Jefferson said that he's hoping to be able to talk to Larry at some point, but he is not into bothering players uh, at this point in the off season, because this is their downtime. And the, the vibe I got from Sean Jefferson when he was talking about it was, yeah, that conversation could very well take place. But my guess is Sean Jefferson's probably going to find out about retirement about the same, maybe not as the same time as us, but after a few other people in this organization, I'm guessing that, you know, Michael Bidwell and Steve Kime and Cliff Kingsbury will be the first ones to know Larry Fitzgerald's decision uh, of whether he's going to come back or not. And then that information will be disseminated to the rest of us uh, in some way, shape or form. But we, we still don't know. And to be honest, guys, I mean, I feel like the longer we go, it's, it feels like that improves the chances of Larry trying to play at least one more season um, because this is, this is late for him. I mean, this is the latest, I think now at this point, or pretty close to the latest that we've heard anything. I agree. I was just about to pose the question, the, true or false, the longer we wait, the better the odds are that the answer is Larry's coming back for an 18th season. True or false, Kyle? Uh, I'd say somewhere in between. I don't, I don't know if it matters because like Darren said, it's been longer than it has the last four years or whatever, but what happened to every single other time he decided to come back. So I don't think this is a barometer, meaning he's more likely to come back because it's taking longer. He decided to come back quickly in some years, a little bit longer in some others, but every single time it's been earlier than this and he did come back. So maybe he's just making sure he wants to retire and, and not making a rash decision. I, I'm not saying that, is the truth, but I could definitely see it going either way still. And I don't think it improves the chances of him coming back just because we're into mid February now. Maybe he's waiting on JJ Watt, you know, I, I don't know. Maybe, you know, maybe he's waiting to see if there's, there's some sort of news um, or a uh, D hop Instagram post. <laughs> exactly. You know, so I just, uh, I don't know. I, I get the sense. Did he meet the media, by the way, at Pebble? Did he ever do a media session? Did you guys see? Did he, did he anybody lob him the proverbial question when he's standing there with Bill Murray? I did not see anything. And, and again, everything that he seems to have answered at this point was he just didn't have a decision. Uh, so, I mean, I, I think we're, we're I, I, again, I don't know if he knows at this point, which is why, um, which is why we haven't heard anything. And to be honest, I see where Kyle's coming from and he's not wrong. I mean, Larry knows that once he says he's retiring, he's done. And so you absolutely want to be sure. Now I will say this. I think the reason it's uh, maybe, maybe it's not improving the chances he's coming back necessarily, but I do think that I think the length of time does underscore the fact that he is seriously thinking about hanging it up at this point. And he does want to give heavier thought to it. And if you continue to think, do I really want to do this? Then within that prism, I think you could say, well, maybe it, it, it does it does improve, however, incrementally, the chances that he comes back. Because I do think, I, it feels like, and, and Paul, we've talked about this before, it feels like the vibe at the end of the season was he was probably done. And so it makes sense that he's going to want to really – give it a lot of thought. And, and either way, I, I understand where he might go with it, but there's a, there's a lot involved here. I mean, if he decides, okay, I'm coming back, does that legitimately change what this team might do at wide receiver? Do they say, well, you're, you're close enough to the end. We've got to be looking forward to the future. And if so, and they get a guy, whether in free agency or the draft that is high up enough, does that push Larry Fitzgerald's role into a more diminished part where he even wants to be there in the first place. I mean, there's, there's all these things he's got to start juggling at this point. Two thoughts. One, could he possibly be waiting along with the team on the official salary cap figure? A guy who's made his Jersey number the last number of years, that's not feasible, doable or plausible, but what sort of haircut is Larry going to take in terms of his $11 million salary? 
And is that predicated on what that official final number is? And is that contingent upon these media deals that are hanging in the balance to some degree, even though they don't kick in later, teams might be willing to spend a little more or make certain accommodations down the line and restructure things accordingly that they'll have to account for later if they know these media right deals are in place. So I wonder if it's purely the business of football right now, if I'm going to play, how much am I going to make? Uh, number two, um, I, I would say this much as, as far as Larry goes, as I totally lost my thought, Kyle. So if you had something to throw in at the very <laughs> yeah. moment, what is <laughs> I'll say here, here I'll, I got the lifesaver right here. <laughs> now, I, I think the, the Fitz business idea would be totally Fitz where he's going to tell you, Hey, if it's 185 million, I'll play for X amount. But if it goes up, I get a percentage of the cap after that. That would be a definite uh, Fitz business move. And that would be fantastic if true. And, but you're right. I mean, can he still get $11 million at this point? Probably not, but we all know how much he means to this franchise and he's going to get more than the, the production would say. So where is that? Where do you meet between team and player? And I mean, Fitz has a lot of leverage because of who he is, because of what he means to this team and this state. And it's, it's an interesting negotiation for sure. Hey, I mean, the guy's on the board of directors for Dick Sporting Goods and <laughs> yeah. he's, he's a part owner of an NBA team. OK, so he's been his way. He's been around the business table and dealings before. Here's what I was going to offer earlier. And it slipped <laughs> my mind. It goes back to two weeks ago on the Big Red Rage. Antoine Bethea was our guest, former Cardinal, 14 years in the NFL, just recently filed his papers and made it official. He retired. Wolf asked him, why? What made you decide? What was the catalyst to say, you know what, I'm done? And he said, it wasn't the season itself. He said, when you get to September, that's great. You can make it week to week. You have games to prepare for. The adrenaline is flowing. You enjoy playing in the games. It's February through August. It's do I want to put in all the commitment to staying in shape and all the OTAs. Now, obviously, that's going to be reduced and different. It looks like another pandemic affected offseason but it's training and staying in shape and then training camp. He said, that's how you know. When you don't have the willingness to do the off season, that tells you that you don't have another playing season in you. That's what it came down to for him. That's what he was told by a number of guys. And I wonder if Larry's still trying to make that decision. Do I have it in me? Do I really want to start training again and go through all the off season prep? No, and I, I think that's a fair question, especially when you start talking about, let's put the money aside for a minute. If you're going to do all this work uh, and then you feel like maybe you aren't targeted quite as much as you should be, you know, is it worth that trade off? I will, I will say that, I mean, Kurt Warner said the same thing and it wasn't the physical part of the, uh, of the training, but the mental part that really drove Kurt out saying, I just mentally, I was burned out having to do it. So that's also part of it. It's funny. Uh, I love Antoine Bethea. He's a great guy. But the other thing, too, which kind of rings back in my head, um, I mean, Antoine Bethea didn't play in 2020. He retired right. now, and I'm sure he didn't want to uh, – I'm sure he was looking for a job this past year, and team said, yeah, we don't want you anymore. You're, you're, it's past your time. That's one reason why he probably retired is because nobody wanted him. And it makes me think – and I love Antoine Bethea. I hope he doesn't take that as a rip like he'd ever hear it. But um, I, I think with Larry, here's a guy who I've heard say to me multiple times, you want to be able to retire before they retire you. And he's in a position right now where he can still make that call. And you don't want to be in a position where you're Jerry. I mean, Jerry Rice, greatest receiver of all time, he was retired by the NFL. His last game, the last time he ever appeared in a uniform was with the Denver Broncos in a preseason game in the fourth preseason game at Sun Devil Stadium. And he was playing in the fourth quarter. And after that game was over, he, I think the writing was on the wall and he said, okay, I'm done. You don't want Larry Fitzgerald to be, you know, in a position where, and I, this team would never do that to him. And Jerry Rice was in a different spot where he had already played for three other teams beyond the 49ers. And, and that's, that's the deal is he, he meant different to those, that the 49ers than he did to the other teams and Fitz means something different. So that would never happen here, the preseason part of it. But 
you know, you, you don't want to get to the point where, it, again, they're retiring you rather than the other way around. And, and that can make for difficult decisions too. So I, I think all of these things uh, get stuffed in Fitz's head when he's thinking about this. 